So I'm still here. So either yesterday's video has not made it to the Ohio state government, or they're not really worried about little old me because I'm no Aaron Brockovich. I will say that Aaron Brockovich went to East Palestine, Ohio a few weeks ago when everything was kind of popping off, I guess is the right term here. Um, and I haven't really seen or heard anything from her or about her since the one or two interviews that she did. So hopefully she's still looking into everything. If you guys have heard anything or seen anything that I may have missed um, regarding her trying to help the people of East Palestine, Ohio, I would love to hear it. So please let me know. Quick update y'all on yesterday's massive, massive fire in West Eastern Pennsylvania um, yesterday morning. The ATF is now out investigating. And for those of you who are thinking to yourself, why would the ATF be investigating a fire? Let me explain why, an AT why the ATF investigates. As a rule, ATF helps investigate fires that involve more than $1 million in losses, the injury or death of a firefighter or a policeman or any other loss of life, or where the cause is unclear or involves explosives. So... We know that there were no lives lost, so it's either the over a million dollars or the shady AF <laughs> um, whole thing regarding the fire at that warehouse in West Eastern Pennsylvania. Now, ironic that we discussed yesterday in regards to the fishiness of the entire warehouse going up in flames all at once, like literally all at once. Also interesting tidbit, there was a medical waste disposal company in there. Inside this warehouse with numerous other companies, a medical waste company was also in there. So when they're saying there's no issues with air quality and they're, they're monitoring it, are they monitoring for whatever medical waste may have been in there? That's my question because we don't know exactly what that medical waste was. I can't find the name of a medical waste company that was in there. All I know is that the news stations in that area have stated medical medical waste company is in that location but they have not said the name of it and i can't find the name of it just that it is in that building so the hazmat responders dep and pennsylvania fish and boat commission placed absorbent booms around a sheen on the lehigh river i called it lehigh yesterday it's lehigh according to everybody that's messaged me um there was a sheen on the lehigh river adjacent to the site and the fire chief said uh, they said it's of no concern and has since dissipated. We believe that it was just water runoff from the fire site. Well, the fact that there was anything in the water, number one, is a concern. Okay. Just because you can't see it on top anymore doesn't mean it didn't sink lower or move farther down. And you believe it's just water runoff doesn't really fill me with a whole sense of um, what's the right word? Relief because you're, you believe it? I don't, I don't know. So they say the water's fine, but in the same breath, y'all, they let you know that the response relied on two public fire hydrants, all the, the firefighters that showed up to put out this uh, massive uh, warehouse fire in West Easton, Pennsylvania. They relied on two public fire hydrants, which could be causing low water pressure and dirty or cloudy water in the area of West Easton, Wilsonboro, and Easton, according to the Eastern Suburban Water Authority, the, the authority confirms the drinking water is safe, according to a status update on its website, eswater.net. If you guys live in the area and want to check it out, eswater.net is the website where they will tell you it's fine, even if it's not. So there's that. Sediment in pipe is stirred up due to the amount of water flowing through the pipes that is needed to fight the fire, the authority said. Run your cold water for five to 10 minutes to clear any cloudy or discoloration. Once fire is under control, ESWA crews will flush mains in areas that were affected to clear the discoloration. Y'all, I don't know how water works, obviously, but why would using water in a greater portion, like for firefighting, suddenly make the water like gross for the residents of these areas? Like, I don't understand. They say that the water's fine and you can drink your water at the, and literally in the exact same breath, they tell you that it's going to be cloudy and, and muddy looking and that you should run your cold water for five to 10 minutes to clear any cloudy or discoloration. Don't drink cloudy, discolored water. If you have to run it for five to 10 minutes to get clean water, guess what? Your water is not okay right now. I, just because, the, okay, so basically what they're wanting you to believe is that the water is okay because no chemicals got into it. But the fact of the matter is the water's not okay if it's this gross, sludgy junk, discolored junk that's coming out of your, your, your tap right now. Like, I don't think they understand that the two things 
should should meet up. Like if, if it's good here, it should also be good here. But if it's not good here, then it's not good at all. So that's just my thought. I would like to point out, y'all, that the Lehigh River flows into the Delaware River. This is the same river that just last week had a chemical spill in it. You guys, we talked about that previously. I don't know if you remember or not, but we did talk about that. Now, I also want to mention to you um, that, where is it? Hold on, I lost, my, I lost my spot here. So there is an article here that says, companies have discharged millions of pounds of toxic chemicals in the Delaware River the last five years, records show. It says scores of facilities on the river are permitted to legally release toxic chemicals into the water each year. We already know that the EPA, federal government, whoever decides all these things, I'm pretty sure it's the, the, federal, the US EPA, decides how much crap can go into your water, how much crap can go into your air, how much crap can go into your food, how much crap can go into everything, basically. And we already know that the Shell Petrochemical Station in Beaver County, Pennsylvania, has far exceeded its allotted crap they're allowed to put out into the air and the water in the first few months it's been in business, I guess you could call the words. So they're being sued by the EPA. I don't really see how that changes anything. Um, they're still going to let all the crap out unless you shut them down, but they're not going to shut them down because it's Shell Petrochemical. And of course they're big names, big brand, and they have BlackRock behind them, behind their name and whatever else. But when it comes to this, y'all, I want to explain this to you. It says on the Delaware river between Trenton and Pennsylvania's Southern border, 11 industrial plants have released toxic chemicals into the water in legally permitted amounts over the last five years. According to reports, they must file to federal officials. They must file. Listen, of the 62 manufacturers, petroleum facilities and chemical makers within a mile of the river's edge, two have reported releasing millions of pounds of toxic discharges. Again, within legal limits, according to an analysis of U.S. Environmental Protection Agency records. The Inquirer, Philadelphia Inquirer, that is, uh, analyzed the EPA's toxic release inventory, TRI for short, uh, records after last Friday's accidental spill. <laughs> From now on, when we hear the word accidental, we're going to do this, okay? Just so we're all fully aware, accidental um, spill of more than 8,100 gallons of hazardous chemicals from a Bucks County plant to examine activity on the water that potentially imperils Philadelphia drinking water. First off, it was 8,100 gallons. Then I saw something else said a little over 10,000 gallons. They can't make up their minds on exactly how much they accidentally spilled into the waterway. The records do not provide a full picture as the reports rely on voluntary compliance when a company releases toxins. Also, dozens of facilities are too small to have to file those reports with the EPA about discharges into the river, which is a major throughway for ships carrying petroleum products and other chemicals that can spill into the Delaware. Do you hear what I just said? Do you understand what I just said? Let's do this one more time so that we don't miss anything here. Um, reports rely on voluntary compliance when a company releases toxins. You really think a company is going to release a shit ton of toxins into the air, the water, the soil and go, we should really tell them what we've done here. They should know that we've released this much stuff. They, they got to know what we've done here so they can fine us or put us out of business. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the second one here, dozens of facilities are too small to have to file these reports with the EPA. Dozens, meaning not just one who could possibly be letting out chemicals into your air, your water, your soil that are above where they need to be, but dozens of them combined releasing stuff that because they, they are smaller companies individually, they don't have to tell the EPA what, what they're releasing, what's being released into the water, the soil, the air. Y'all, I don't know if you understand this, but if one small company releases a little more than they're supposed to, that's bad. But when dozens of them release a little more than they're supposed to and don't have to tell anybody. They can just like sweep it under the proverbial rug, if you will. Do you understand what that means? What is the point in the EPA? What is the point in the EPA? If all they are there for is to wait for you to voluntarily tell them that you're effing over <laughs> basically um, the citizens of the country, because I'm sure every single city, town, state, whatever, is going to have the same thing. You're going to have dozens of smaller little um, companies releasing things into the air, the water, the soil, but because they're smaller, they don't have to tell the EPA. You're going to have the larger ones who go, man, that was a lot of crap we just released into that Ohio River, Mississippi River, Delaware, the, to the Gulf, into the Atlantic, into the Pacific, wherever. Oh, but you know what? Voluntary, voluntary. Yeah, I don't want to volunteer this information, so we're just going to keep it to ourselves. I have an issue with that. I don't know if you could tell from the demeanor over here. Um, 
We are vulnerable, says Charles Haas, Haas, H-A-A-S, I think it's Haas, a Drexel University professor and water quality expert. We have a drinking water source on a highly navigable river. So it says here, top two sites released over 4 million pounds of toxic chemicals into Delaware River from 2017 to 2021. Two industrial sites along the Delaware River between Pennsylvania's southern border and Trenton, New Jersey account for 99.95% of all toxic chemicals released into the water based on self-reporting to the EPA. Both are downriver from Philadelphia's water supply. Table shows the combined amounts for five-year period. Look, what I'm going to do is put a link to this Philadelphia Inquirer um, article into the pinned comment of today's video so you can see all of these places. And then, because I should have done this sooner, I'm going to go through and see how many of these have a little black rock, little Vanguard um, you know, backing them up or whatever else. It says six of 11 industrial sites that reported toxic discharges within the last five years have released carcinogens cancer causing, just so we're fully aware, or slow degrading bioaccumulative toxic chemicals, PBT for short, according to the EPA's database. However, only two facilities, the PBF Energy Refinery in Paulsboro, Gloucester County, and the Monroe Energy Refinery in Trainer, Delaware County, accounted for nearly all of the chemicals discharged. Together, they account for 4.4 million pounds of toxic chemicals emptied into the river since 2017 that they know of that they know of that's how they need to end this thing that they know of because everybody else is like mm, i'm not telling them this is the honor system but as a petroleum chemical company we have no honor so they're they're, they're probably not telling them i mean like would you i mean you and i would because we're good people but um most companies they're gonna watch out for themselves because i don't know if i've said this before but <laughs> hashtag profit over people um it says here do we have, need the rest of this? No, we don't need the rest of this. So I'm going to put that one into a pin, the pinned comment so you guys can take a look at that. What I do want to mention before we get to the rest, I want to tell you that, where are we here? There's a couple different things. Let's go with this one first because I have a lot. So I wanna, I was sitting here thinking after yesterday's video, I was like, man, you know, after all of this, we're sitting here talking, what is happening with the water and the, the soil from East Palestine, Ohio? Because the last I heard y'all, the last I heard, um, Baltimore was like, we're not taking your crap. Oklahoma was like, nope, we're not taking it either. And so everything kind of just flatlined, stalled. And I'm like, what is happening with this chemical laden water and soil from East Palestine, Ohio? The, you know, they're saying it's not that big a deal, but they're moving tons upon tons upon tons of this stuff into trucks and moving it somewhere where is it going right now? So according to this, East Palestine water and soil cleanup could take another two months, the regulator tells Congress, like they're having to keep up with Congress. So it says here, cleanup of water and soil that was contaminated by the February 3rd train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, should be completed within the next two months if the current pace of removal continues, the Ohio EPA director Ann Vogel said. We are seeing as many as 40 to 45 trucks a day taking soil out of East Palestine this week. Uh, Vogel told a House Energy and Commerce Subcommittee on Environment, Manufacturing, and Criticals Material hearing chaired by U.S. Representative Bill Johnson, the Marietta Republican who represents East Palestine and Congress. That's a mouthful. She says, um, I'm not going to predict that there will be no more challenges, but things are on pace as of today. But they're still not telling us where they're taking it right now. Just, just want to put that out there. It says here... Um, Federal and state officials fear, nope, that part doesn't matter. They're just basically a recap of the crap that they have caused. It says Johnson described the cleanup process as a bumpy road to say the least and expressed frustration that the dirt contaminated by chemicals that spilled in the crash took so long to leave the community because the proper legal certified disposal process was improperly turned into a political football. Cool. But ma'am, you're full of shit right here in this. Listen, let me, let me rephrase this for you. Let me read to you again what they're saying and then put it to you correctly as we do every single time so nobody forgets. She expressed frustration that the dirt contaminated by, contaminated by chemicals that spilled in the crash took so long to leave the community. They did not spill. The chemicals were in their containers where they belonged one container looked like it maybe possibly could maybe get too hot, maybe possibly explode. So Mike DeWine, the governor of Ohio and local officials decided to open it, the one, and then 
willy nilly open four other ones and pour them into the ground and then decided to light them on fire. So this right here, chemicals that spilled in the crash, that did not occur. Please keep that in mind. Again, I've said it since day one, they will try to change the narrative every single time they write something. And hopefully by the end of it all, you have forgotten where it started. Where it started was complete negligence on the part of Ohio and on the part of Norfolk Southern and the part of the EPA. All three of them effed it up big time in the beginning. And now they're trying to slowly, again, sweep it under the proverbial rug as it moves on and on and on. And they change their wording every so often so that you forget exactly what they have done to the people of East Palestine, Ohio, and numerous surrounding people in different counties, different state lines. Like, do not forget, okay? I saw I'm saying, do not forget exactly how this started. Not, don't, don't think about where they want you to think it is now and you know it's not a big deal. We're just moving soil around. We're just gonna move some soil from here to over there. It's fine, we're gonna move some water. It's not a big deal. We're gonna have an Easter egg hunt this weekend for the kids in East Palestine, Ohio. Great that you're getting back to life, but don't forget, this is a big deal. Do not forget where it started and that's, that's what I gotta say. This says, I do wonder if this train derailed an inner city Philadelphia or an affluent Chicago suburb rather than rural flyover country Ohio, would those communities get the same treatment? Governor Mike DeWine earlier this month expressed frustration with the slow pace of removal, blaming red tape that he believed the US EPA needed to cut through and calling on Norfolk Southern to identify and authorize more hazardous waste disposal facilities to take more than 24,000 tons of contaminated soil. Look, he's fresher at that slow pace because he needs to get all that stuff out of there before um, he applies for that grant in August to have those coal mines underneath East Palestine, Ohio, um, turned into solar or wind tunnels and uh, all those people moved out. It takes time, y'all. It takes time to um, go through eminent domain and displace an entire village of people and, and get to the minerals under the ground. Side note, that's what I wanted to say. Listen, we're going to, I don't know, whatever with this. People yesterday said to me, listen, I don't know if it's for the, the coal mines or if it's for the minerals. Y'all, two birds with one stone. Two birds with one stone. If they are able to get to coal mines, they got to dig all around all these places to do what they need to do. They're going to hit the minerals too. The minerals um, over in Pennsylvania, you got cobalt. And I know I'm, I'm now I'm jumping around because I had this for later, but the minerals over in, um, let's see, you know what? Let's, let's read it this way. Cause I made like a little, a little note. Okay. You ready? As far as what we talked about yesterday, I want to point out that my theory on the land grab of East Palestine, Ohio by its own government to utilize those abandoned coal mines for the government grants is my opinion. Y'all, it is my opinion. I don't have factual paperwork in front of me. Uh, these are just dots that I have connected. Do I think there is factual paper trail that would prove the theory? Yes. Yes, I do. 100% do I believe that. Uh, I would also like to point out that with this theory, it is basically a killing of two birds with one stone, as in they would get the minerals in East Palestine as well. We talked before in previous videos about what minerals may or may not be in East Palestine, Ohio and surrounding areas. We know cobalt is right over the border in Pennsylvania with a smidge of it going into East Palestine, but in East Palestine, there's aluminum, chromium, iron, manganese, and silica. They've already got, um, some of those have mines already in Columbiana County. So we do know there are minerals over there. We also know there's oil in the area. Y'all, there is oil in the area and the village has been pushing since 2013 the officials of the village, not the residents, have been pushing since 2013, if not sooner, for the residents to lease their land to companies in order to bring business and money into the village. Just want to leave that in your minds as we continue to keep an eye on what is happening in East Palestine, Ohio and surrounding areas, just um, in case you guys were not aware, did not know. I'm going to get back to this really fast to see if it says where this stuff is going, because as of right now, it still does not say where any of the water or soil is going from East Palestine at this point. We know the ones that went to Texas, that went to Michigan, went to Indiana. Some went into places in Ohio, but then they, they made a holding, a holding cell basically for a lot of this stuff. And I'm trying to see um, if it's going to say anything. Derailment occurred. No. So, so far I don't have anything here that says where they're going to take it to. And it, 
I, I got nothing for you. So that's what they've been doing. They've been holding it in Liverpool, East Liverpool city area. That's where they've been holding all of these trucks and stuff with the soil and the water just sitting there. So now you have this just holding area of contaminated crap, which in itself is still just as bad in my personal opinion. I just wanted to throw that out there for you guys. Now I do want to tell you here that, um, weirdly, weirdly y'all, it is now illegal. It, this passed on, what day was this? I don't have the date on here. Let me show you. You guys can see. So this is a Twitter tweet, tweet, tweet thing from Twitter, whatever you want to call it from the governor himself. Effective today, it is now illegal in most circumstances for anyone in Ohio to use or hold a cell phone or electronic device while driving. I find that interesting um, because a lot of people right now are throwing up videos of train derailments and explosions and whatever else. And a lot of times it's because you're seeing it while you're driving and you pull out your phone to record. But Ohio's like, hey, 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 <laughs> no, stop being able to show the things that are going on in the country. You're just going to no hands. You can't touch your phone. If you upload a video, if you take a video of anything, you're probably going to get in trouble for it from now on. Just my thought process on that. So you better hope you have dash cams to record for you so that you don't get in trouble in the future for, cause watch that be the next thing. If you happen to have a video that shows something happening and you go to give it to the authorities, the authorities go, Oh, well, clearly you pulled out your phone while you were driving. You're under arrest. You're, here's your, here's your ticket or whatever else. And you are now the bad guy as opposed to the person trying to help show what, what you saw. I don't put it past any of the government officials just so we're fully, fully aware. Now, um, oh, another interesting thing that I came across, this uh, came out today, company to pay millions for hazardous emissions at oil and gas wells in Ohio. Look at that. Mo more stuff in Ohio. Who, who, who knew? Who knew that was going to happen? So um, the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, once again, has said Utica Resource Operating allowed uncontrolled emissions from more than a dozen oil and gas well facilities in Guernsey, Morgan, and Washington counties, negatively impacting air quality. And in case you guys were curious, I've Let's see if I can zoom this in. Can I zoom this in? Nope, cannot zoom this in. So I was trying to figure out where they were, and this is very hard for me to do backwards. I don't know exactly what I'm doing. Where are we? So we're down here. The counties are down in here, and East Palestine, some are up in there, just so we have a point of reference on where these places are that are now in trouble for oil and gas and whatnot. And now I've lost my article. <laughs> I don't know where it went. I had it, and then I lost it. Y'all, hold on. Let me find it back again. Here we go. So they have to pay millions. The company must pay $1 million in civil pen penalties for allowing hazardous emissions and spend nearly $2 million to reduce emissions and address other issues raised by the EPA. What's up with all the people around the area that may have gotten sick from all of these obviously um, hazardous emissions negatively impacting air quality? Do the people around there get money? Um, Do those people now get the My ID bracelets that East Palestine was handed out on January 29th from their fire department ahead of this accidental derailment and accidental but on purpose um, by DeWine? Like he purposefully release the chemicals in East Palestine, you know how many purposefully set them on fire. Like those are literally on purpose. This is not my opinion. That is factual. That is a fact on purpose, release the chemicals on purpose, set them on fire. It wasn't an accident just so we're all fully aware. And we keep that part in mind at all times. Um, so I wonder what happens to these people. So it says here that U S district court judge Edmund A. Sargis Jr. Again, this came out today signed off on the consent decree earlier this week between Utica Resource Operation, Operating LLC and the U.S. government. Uh, on Wednesday, United States Attorney for the Southern District of Ohio, Kenneth L. Parker, announced the agreement, which was negotiated by the U.S. Department of Justice, Environmental and Natural Resources Division and the EPA. Keep in mind, the Department of Justice is also, the Justice Department, however you want to phrase it, is also currently suing Norfolk Southern um, for the basic fiasco of East Palestine, Ohio. I just want to remind you guys there. Utica Resource Operating will be required to spend $1.9 million on actions at 15 facilities in Guernsey, Morgan, and Washington counties, which would bring them into compliance with the Clean Air Act and their permits. $1.9 million to bring them into compliance. Here's my, here's my issue. Why were they allowed to get out of compliance? When it comes to air quality, water quality, soil quality, whatever, food quality. Why is there 
why is it permissible to get out of compliance? Like, I feel like the, the EPA, FDA, all these people have plenty of people that could go out and check on these things. You have food inspectors or what are they called? Um, the ones who go to the restaurants and double check everything there. Why aren't we going to places like this or whatever these places are? Why aren't we going to the places with the oil, with the gas, with the chemicals in general, with the, the water, uh, with sh like Shaw Petrochemical? Why don't we have somebody who goes out there and says, hey, once a month, we're coming through to make sure you're sh it's running the way it's supposed to because it makes sense to me. Why aren't we doing these things? That's, I'm just curious. It says Parker's office said this resolves allegations that Utica resource operating violated the clean air act to their facilities. This consent decree as entered by the court will further demonstrate our ongoing commitment to protect the valuable environmental resources enjoyed by the people of Eastern Ohio. I don't think any of them enjoy carcinogens and all those other things that are being aimed at them from all of these plants and all these chemical things and whatever else that are centered in Ohio. It's just my, just my thought there. Um, let's see, does this part matter? I'll put this in the pinned comment too, just so you guys can see the rest, but I don't think any of that's really important. Now you may have noticed, I don't know if you've noticed, but I am a small little lobster. So burnt the crap out of myself today to said, I didn't want to be in the house. I wanted to be somewhere different during my normal, I changed up my normal routine today just to be on the safe side. I remote started my vehicle. Somebody's like, check your car, make sure there's nothing wrong with it. So I remote started. I was like, if it's going to blow up, it's not going to happen with me in it. So I did a remote start of my vehicle every time I went somewhere. The man stayed with me all day long to make sure everything was fine. We left here and went out to the beach just to be surrounded by a bunch of people just to be on the safe side. Because y'all, when I tell you, that yesterday's video, it worried me to make it, but it was one of those things that somebody said, why would you make it then? What good is having these ideas and seeing these things and, and fully 100% like in my gut, in my core, believing I am correct. What good would it be to not put it out there? Like, I don't understand that. Why would you know something or think you know something and just keep it to yourself when that could potentially continue the harm of other people by keeping it to yourself. I'm not wired like that. I don't, I don't, I'm not a stick your head in the sand and hope it goes past you and you don't have to deal with it kind of person. That's just, it's not how I work. And if I can find a way to help people, I'm going to. And when I'm doing the things that I'm doing, if something comes across that makes sense to me and seems accurate and is something that the people need to know, I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to deal with the repercussions and the consequences that, I mean, that's kind of how it works. It doesn't make sense to me to just not tell people what I think and what I have come across. Like, I, it, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. That's, that's all I got for you there. Um, Y'all, I have a little bit more that I wanted to talk about uh, when it comes to like water and stuff, but that's going to throw us another 30 minutes in. So I think tomorrow we need to talk about this water situation because it is a very, very big deal what, what I've got here. Um, but I don't think we're going to do it today. It's a, it's a little too much for today. You guys will be like, ma'am, I'm overwhelmed. So I'm not going to do it to you today. We're going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to put the things that I have here into today's pinned comments. So if you want to do a little extra reading for the two or three little paragraphs that I did not go over. You can check that out there. If you want to look at the, the companies in the Delaware River um, toxic release, I guess you could call it. Those will be in the pinned comment. Also, listen, I love you all. I thank you all like immensely for your concern uh, for me, not just yesterday, but today and probably going forward because who knows uh, how long this is going to go. But I do appreciate it immensely just so you all know. I do not take a single second of this for granted. Um, and my face feels like it's a on fire tomato. Just so, just so you guys know, uh, that's it. I love you all immensely. If I didn't, I wouldn't be here friggin' plain and simple. I would not put myself in harm's way if I didn't love you guys and want to help as much as humanly possible. So I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday, my squirrel tribe. Cause I didn't say hi, squirrel tribe, hi, squirrel tribe. Uh, happy Wednesday, my dudes, happy hump day. And I will see you guys again tomorrow. Bye.